Good morning. Good to see you this morning. I, uh, I tell you what, I am really, really moved by what Marion Glazer's testimony. I love that line, live one life, one life, and not polar opposites. That's a pretty powerful line. Let me just, you know, I'm going off script here a little bit, but let me just encourage you. I said this last night. As a pastor, the most damnable, devastating trajectory of your life is to live a compartmentalized existence. Eventually, who you are, really are, is going to tell the truth. Eventually. It's just a matter of time. And folks who go through midlife crises, part of that midlife crisis is that they just can't do it anymore. They just can't be something that they're not anymore. Authenticity, transparency, living open lives is your best friend. God made you who you are. Even the struggles that you have, you need to bring them to the forefront and just live one life. So thank you, Marianne. You really blessed my heart with, with that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a, a couple of liberties here, too. Um, this whole Ferguson thing and the situation in New York uh, has deeply disturbed uh, a number of us who are uh, minorities, not because, you know, you can, uh, uh, by the way, be very careful of getting your theology from MSNBC, Fox News, or CNN. Don't, they, they're not, don't, don't get your framework from those places, okay? Um, um, and, and I don't want to get into the facts whether, you know, uh, Michael Brown punched the punch the cop or what happened and all of that. But what I, what I, what I want to beg for us, and I have a lot of hope for this generation, we've got to create a new normal in our culture. We've got to create a new normal. Era is increased with distance. And because we don't really have heart relationships with people who are different than we are, because we don't have that heart relationship, we don't understand their historical context. We don't understand their feelings. And uh, there is a new movement that I'm really excited about. Uh, my oldest son, Brian, is right in the middle of all of that. He's written a couple of books. There is a new normal that is taking place um, where there's diversity, multi-ethnic community that is happening. And it presents the truth of the gospel, the visible representation of the power of Christ to transcend that which divides us. It is the relational reconciliation that Jesus came and died for. And I can't help but think, I wonder, I just wonder, if in Ferguson there had been the visible representation of the diverse peoples of God, a church in the midst of Ferguson, living out the integrity of the gospel and doing that which is difficult. And I would remind you that there is not a church in the New Testament, by the way, that is not multi-ethnic, not one. Because Jesus Christ, our reconciliation is not just theoretical, it is meant to be practical. In fact, the Bible clearly leans toward. It is the visible representation of the reconciled people of God from every tribe and every nation, that visible representation that is a powerful evangelistic tool to impact the world. And I say all of that because I really believe the silver lining in Ferguson and in New York and all the other stuff that's coming forward, the silver lining is this, that God is giving the church of Jesus Christ another opportunity to do what the world cannot do and that is to represent the powerful hope of the gospel. And so I want to encourage your generation. Don't be like our generation. Well, yeah, our generation was in the 60s. Back in the 60s, during the Civil Rights Movement, the evangelical wing of the church had an incredible opportunity, a phenomenal opportunity, to present the hope of the gospel and to speak out against injustice and racism. But we were deafeningly silent. I remember being in undergraduate school, 68 to 72, African-American. And I'm saying, where are the Christians? Where are the Christians? 
does not God have something to say? And I want to encourage your generation, don't pass this opportunity up. God's created another moment in history for us to model the difficult, not just articulate stuff, talking heads every place, but to model the difficult and to speak hope and to give a word from God in terms of how we live and who we relate to. So that's off script and maybe I can borrow a few minutes for my message if that's okay. But we really do need to pray. We really do need to pray. These are, these are, are in a very real sense, these are exciting times. Very exciting times. But we got to say no more. No more. No more division. No, 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 no more. No more. No more. No more condescending statements about people who are different than we are. No more, no more, no more affirming my, my, my conclusions because I don't want to do the hard work of developing a relationship with other minorities. No more. But by the grace of God, we're going to raise our kids to be the beloved, transformed, visible kingdom of our great God. And we're going to live that way. And we've got that opportunity. Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy and thank you, O oh God, for your goodness. And Lord, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in our nation right now. And I pray that you'll help us not to have a collective sense of lockjaw and not to be cowards and, and not to be fearful. Lord, I pray in the name of your son that as your people that we will not shrink away from doing the necessary but hard stuff and that we won't let people tell us how to think and we won't let people tell us how to feel but we'll take the courage of the empty tomb and the courage of Calvary and live out the mandate for which we were born for. We were born to be your people, Father. And I pray that you will use us and bless us. Bless these young people here. God, how I thank you for them. I pray that they will not commit the same mistakes that my generation committed, that we will not shrink back in silence and in fear but that we will move forward based upon what Jesus has done and what the gospel implies and what we ought to live for. Thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen.